And the difference is doing it. Okay, are you ready for this one? Look, I hope you're ready for this one, because this one, this is like the one. This is the one. All right, here's what we're back with. It's got me all juiced up again. It's another white hot edition of Other Basement Dish Dyer. <laughs> all right, listen. In this episode of Other Basement Dish Dyers, we are bringing back a superstar from easily our most popular video on the whole YouTube channel. And she's coming back to show us how to make super sick, crazy cells. I'm talking about type stuff. All right, you may have guessed who it is. It is indeed the lovely and talented Miss Tiffany Shaw. I'm so stoked. Okay, look, she's got it figured out. She really, she's got it figured out. And in the true T Diddy spirit, She's coming back to show us all of her secrets on how to do this. And not just like one technique on how to make super sick crazy cells. Not two, for that matter. She is bringing the full trifecta of super sick crazy cell techniques for all of us in the D Diddy Army. There is more than enough in this tutorial like to get you through the rest of the winter. Okay, I'll say a couple quick things before we roll into the tutorial here because I'm gonna let Tiffany just take us right to the end once I once I switch it over first and foremost a huge thank you goes out to Tiffany Shaw for all the effort she put into making this for us like collectively from the whole TDD army right through my TDD sweatshirt mm, hell yeah Tiffany this thing is the bomb and look you're all about to take a lesson too on what I mean by the effort that she put into making this tutorial for us because it's not always easy doing this video stuff. Like, do you know why? Because cursed technology. Cursed. Mm, but our girl muscled through it. She more than muscled through it and put together like a grip of killer footage that I was able to go and bang other basement disc tires. And like I said, this is the one. It's the one. So Tiffany, from me, from the whole TDD Army, and from the TDD Army that's not even in the TDD Army yet, that's coming down the road. They're gonna watch us and love it. Thank you. Some of you, maybe you should do it in the comments again. Friggin' thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing. Tiffany, you're a rock star. We love you. Thank you. Second, here's the thing I was left with after cutting up all the footage. I was thinking to myself, these are like, the sickest looking dye beds I've ever seen. <laughs> They're crazy, the designs in them. And anybody can do this. Everybody can do this. <laughs> There's not like a bunch of super complicated stencils and hours of weeding and like well-practiced brushwork and spin dyeing. I mean, it's just bang, 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 right to a killer disc dye. And like, just so it's been said out loud, to all of you watching this, you can totally do this. You can totally do this. Even if, like, this is your first T. Diddy video, and you've never died a disc before, and you're still sitting there thinking, what the heck is this guy on? Like, you can do this. <laughs> you can do it too. I hope that's what you come out of it with. Other than, like, yo, that was awesome. You should be thinking, I can totally do this. And then you know what you should do? You should do this. <laughs> you should do this. You'll come out with it with way more than just some super hot plastic. I promise you're gonna get that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah feeling. That's the kind of stuff we do. That's what we're trying to teach you here. Hell yeah. That's second, all right? Third, if at the end of this, like you feel like you haven't gotten your full fix and you just need some more other basement disc tires, I can totally empathize, okay? Because I need some more other basement disc tires in my life. I need it. So look, if you're one of those other basement disc tires and you got something, you got it. You know you got it. When you got it, you got it. You know it. You got it. Because every time when you're done, you're just like, <laughs> hit me up. If you're one of those guys or girls, hit me up. All right, and then I'll do all that same stuff. Beep, bop, 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 and bang, another other basement disc tires. And here's the thing about it. It like rises the tide for the whole T Diddy army. That's the thing about it, it's like so awesome. So if you're one of those, hit me up. But let's get back to like where I started. If you just need some more other basement disc tires in your life, okay? You got a couple options. You could just start scrolling through the hundreds of videos that we have on our YouTube channel until you find one. Or 
you can take the easy route, okay? And you could open up your computer and go to our, like, still kind of new, but definitely super fancy T. Diddy website, okay? I'll show you what I mean. Okay, okay, check this out. Like, we're there. This is it. So, like, when you get there and you see it, you'll know you're in the right place. But we don't need to go, look, there's last month's giveaway in Scott's disc. But we don't need to go through all this, okay? Like, at the top here where it says Disc Dice Center, mouse over that, click where it says Video Tutorials, and bang, you're in Boomtown, okay? And then look, all the videos we've ever done on YouTube and Facebook, they're all listed and organized here by category. I don't need to read the categories to you as I'm scrolling by, you can read that yourself. But like, whatever you're trying to do, you go there, you got it, bang, couple videos to choose from. And then when you get down here close to the bottom, Boomtown, that's what I'm talking about. Here's the other basement disc dyers section. You can get your fix like right now. Look, here's the video we're working on. Pretty soon, that's gonna have t the Tiffany video in there. But then on the right, look, we got all the other ones we've done. Scott Simposky, boom. Brian Ecker, Clear Glue Swirl, boom. Disc Golf Nerd, he'll teach you about shampoo and conditioner, boom. There's Tiffany's last video that's super popular. And Greg Renfro, and DB Dyes doing lotion swirls. And look, there's my man from Dead Bird Discs who helped us start this whole series. So bang, you got it all right there. And if, you, and if you need your fix, that's where you can get it. You don't have to wait. You can get you can get it right now. And then you have to do all that scrolling through the hundreds of YouTube videos. Boom! That's what I'm talking about, the TDD website. All right. That is more than enough of all the babble. So we are going to switch from the babble portion of the show to the doing it portion of the show. This is always exciting, okay? But like I said, I'm going to let Tiffany take us right to the end and finish us out. I'll be back in like two or three days with the results for the hands eye disc giveaway from a man Scott Simposky that I was just talking about so you don't have to wait too long I'll be back soon and we got a couple more other basement disc dyers already in the pipeline getting ready for the next one but right now kids this ride's about to start so it's time to strap in let's officially start doing it and until I see you again keep doing it <laughs> Hey everybody, Tiffany Shaw back again with The Differences Doing It. I have had some issues with this video. My phone crashed on me and I lost the information. I lost the video of me mixing up the dyes for you. So today we were actually going to talk about cells. I'm going to try and do this. You won't see the process of the dyes that I mixed up for the glue bed that you're going to see later. But I will actually do really quick uh, one color just to show you how I mix it up. The idea behind this was in order to get cells in your disc dyeing or in acrylic pouring, you have to be aware of the different densities of the pigments. The lighter the density, the more likely that color is to rise up. The heavier the density, the more dense that pigment is, the more likely it is to sink down. And that action creates cells. It's called the Raleigh-Taylor instability. There is also a really great article by the left-brained artist everything you want to know about cells tons of different techniques so basically with the densities what you want to do when you are layering the colors in the cup you want to put the heaviest pigments in the cup first and then going lighter put the lighter pigments that doesn't mean by color that means by weight I had done this whole thing in the other video where I actually measured out each color that I used so it actually it turned out I um, put a teaspoon of dye or half a teaspoon of dye nope that's one teaspoon of dye in each cup and the blue actually turned out to be the heaviest of them all turquoise was the lightest of them and then I layered them in order so when you see me layering them in the cup it's so it goes from blue to red to purple I didn't want to put the yellow next to the purple, so I actually switched the turquoise next to the purple and then put the yellow on top of that. And then you see here I have cornstarch. The cornstarch is layered in between the blue and the red. That was basically the same way I mixed my dyes, but I used cornstarch in it instead of in the mixture of Floetrol and glue instead of dye, just so that I would have a quote unquote white for negative space. And you'll see that later when it comes up when you see me pouring it in, whatever the white cup is that's cornstarch instead of actual dye so I am going to do a teaspoon of powdered dye about four milliliters of alcohol it's 80 percent 80 or above is good one part flow trawl and one part watered down glue so I do water down the glue a little bit 
just enough to get it runny and I'll show you the consistency that I like but I'm gonna pause this video so that I can get the get this out of the way and get my glue set up and I will be right back all right since I'm just doing one color I'm just gonna mix up enough for this one color and I'll find a use for it in a dye later this is just straight glue that's more than enough and if you see this is really thick and it leaves a mound on the top that kind of stays there for a while. We don't want that, we want it a little thinner. So we'll start by adding a little water at a time and stir it up. Actually, that's a perfect amount of water, that's good. So it runs a little bit smoother now than if it were just plain glue. What we're gonna do, the way all of these cups in the next videos are mixed is, we took a teaspoon of dye, So all of the dyes have the same volume. And then I actually measured this on my scale, just like this, just the powder inside of the cup. And that's how I came up with the numbers that she saw earlier so that I would know how to layer them in the cup. So then with that, we are going to do about four milliliters of alcohol. This is just 80% alcohol in here. Stir that up. Then I am going to add Floetrol. As much bone troll as I have in that glue there, so. This is just a organza or organdy piece of fabric that I put a rubber band around because Floetrol can get chunky. So this just strains it. Equal parts Floetrol and glue. The reason these are in two different cups right now as opposed to me just putting everything in at once is because I like to mix them the dye with the flow trawl first and then put the glue on top and when I mixed it before I had a huge cup of glue not just this one small cup. So now you're gonna add the glue. This is Prochem Flame Scarlet by the way in case you were wondering. Alright so that's basic mix. What I like to do at this point is the color intensifier packs that come with I dye poly. I put them in this container and I just add a couple of drops. Um, when you are using glue as a medium, glue tends to bind, just like three drops. Glue tends to bind with the, with the pigment of the dye and it's less likely to bind with the actual plastic unless you do extra things like add heat or add the color intensifier, add the alcohol, let it sit for two, three, four, eight days, I don't know but glue's a difficult medium to work with for that because it does that. I'm actually gonna do a couple of pours with just Floetrol later, and then I have a couple of other ones that are not a flip cup or an open core pour cup, but a, for me, an easier way to get cells is using my pre-mix lotion mix, and if you haven't watched the other video, this is in the other video, the first one that we did that shows you everything that goes into Squirgy McSquirterton here. When I do the other techniques like the Dutch pour and the swipe, the reason I like those techniques over this one is because as you can see, this is a lot of dye and a lot of material that I am using here. It's time consuming as opposed to having them all there. You only get to use it like once, maybe twice if you reuse the bed and it's not too muddy. So I may get two dyes out of this cup as opposed to when I use these, I get I mean, I might, I, I haven't mixed this in over a month and I've probably used this bottle in, on maybe eight different dyes, some of the colors, 30, 40 different dyes before I have to replace it. So for me, it's just kind of a, an economic thing a little bit. It, this way is a little bit more wasteful, in my opinion. It's fun. You get the coolest cells by far, I think, but I'm happy with the cells that I get from some of the other techniques that I use. But I did want to show this one because a lot of people see this and it's really cool. I get it. So I didn't want to show how to do it. Now for the trick. This would actually produce cells on its own. They might not be as noticeable, but because of the densities, like I mentioned earlier, when you layer them in the cup the right way, you don't necessarily need silicone to produce cells because cells are a naturally occurring physical phenomenon. You know, so the reason silicone helps is because it's lighter than everything that's in this cup and it pushes all of those colors up and makes them move a little bit faster. Sometimes when I'm doing acrylic pores, I'll sit there and watch the cells expand and change color and grow and get bigger. But 
What I would do is then add a few drops of silicone, just two or three. One, two, three. And then the more you mix it, the smaller your cells are gonna be. So then I would just do, give it a few little stirs and that's it. That is done, it's ready to be poured into a cup um, and give you a bed. That is in another video, so um, we'll come back to that, but that is how I mix all of the colors that you'll see later. Okay, my phone died out on me and when I flipped the cup, you didn't get to see it. So I'm going to try to do it again. I'm going to do another flip cup. This one a little bit different. I'm going to actually flip it in here and then pour the glue around it. But that's what's left of what we had. Still looks kind of cool in there. So let's try this again because we already got a dark color on the bottom. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. And then blue. And then our next color was red. And then purple. And purple. And yellow. And then again with the rest of this white. And as you can see, you should probably wear gloves when you're doing this. It makes a mess. Here comes flip. Right. And of course, I'm going to go around the edges to fill out. Alright, I'm going to turn the light off so you can see the detail a little bit better before I close it. And then I just want to move it around a little bit. Alright, we're going to watch that for a second and see what happens. So, I'm going to put this disc in it. Looks like we got some decent cells going on. I don't know what all of this is happening over here from when I lifted up the cup. All the drips kind of did their own thing on this side. But it looks cool. So, I am going to move this over here and set this disc in it. And we will check back on it and on it tomorrow. All right, everybody, this time we are going to do a swipe to get cells. I am going to try to use the same colors. So we have the Transverse Purple, Prochem Yellow, Bright Yellow, Prochem Bright Red, I Dye Turquoise, and Prochem Bright Blue. So these are the same colors that we weighed out before in the Flip Cup tutorial. I'm going to use the same ones now. The difference is going to be obviously the way these are mixed. And again, if you haven't checked out the other video on how these are mixed, check it out. Um, and also this. This is, for anybody who hasn't watched the other video, this is the same concept as the, the glue Floetrol cornstarch mix. So this is my negative space white that I use and it's it's Floetrol with a little bit of lotion in it. It's got silicone in it and I'm pretty sure that's it, but I also explained that in the other video. So this is going to be a swipe concept. Basically, we're going to put down a glue bed. We are going to lay our colors down on top of it and we are going to use this popsicle stick and we're going to swipe it around and see what we get, see what kind of cells we get with this. So let's get going. 
This is watered down glue again the same way I mixed it for the last video. One thing to note when you are using these, if you let them sit for a while, air can build up inside of these and when you pop it open, sometimes it squirts out everywhere. So one, I always open it um, using a paper towel, but also if you just twist the cap a little, release the air, then you should be fine and it shouldn't spurt out because I've had it splatter out everywhere, which is why I'm not wearing my ring. So I'm a nice little stand over here that my friend got me because I lost it, long story. But anyway, here we go. So we're gonna start with the Pro Chem Blue. And in this, I'm not layering them on top of each other. I'm layering them next to each other because the motion of swiping is going to cause the movement of the pigments to layer on top of each other. So this is just to get us started. Trying to get this out to where it's about the distance and width of a disc might be a little inside of that, but we'll make it work. Doesn't matter if we have gaps. And this is just gonna go in between each color. It's already starting to do things. I just wanna get these few bubbles out so that I don't push the bubbles underneath so you can see the bubbles here. When I swipe, I don't wanna push them underneath. So I'm just gonna start from the heaviest color, which is the blue right here. And I'm gonna swipe the color around over the rest, starting at actually the white to pull that over the top. Slightly push down and turn. Try not to stop too much because you will get weird lines. I am going to grab this to bring you in a little closer. Okay guys, my phone. I did this whole video thinking that my camera was on and running and it wasn't. But this is a Dutch pour. This is what I was trying to show you um, in the exact same colors that we had before. I am gonna go ahead and put a disc in it. It's the same colors that we use for all the other ones. And now I'm gonna try to do another video really quickly of a Dutch pour other colors in this one, but it's the same principle as what I did for this one, using a blow dryer. I'm back again. Hopefully this is the last time. The struggle has been real. I think I've deleted everything I possibly could and I have enough space to finally get this done on the last one, the Dutch Pour. And this is named because the artist who came up with it, Rensky Dona, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She came up with the Dutch Pour and she is, well, I don't know if she came up with it, but she's the most popular. She's obviously Dutch. And what she does is she'll take her acrylics, which she, acrylic paint, which she just mixes with water, and she will put it on a white, canvas with white paint on it, blow the white paint over the cuddle, the colors, so she'll layer the colors into a puddle, blow the white paint over it, and then blow it back out, and it gets these cool cell designs. I don't do the blow over part because I don't really want all of that white in there, but the idea is simple. She used the blow dryer, gets really cool cells, so we're going to get this going. And I put my colors in a line because I know that I'm going to blow them out that way. Um, she does that sometimes too, but she usually puts them on top of each other. I'm just going to layer them next to each other here. Now, 
I am going to grab my airbrush and just touch this up in a few spots, push this color out here. Alright, that looks pretty good. Take you on for a close up. Alright, guys, here's the close up. So, basically, the Dutch pour, I just put the blow dryer on high and push the colors out. Use my airbrush to touch up a few spots, but not too many. And this is another way to get cells. And my favorite, because you saw how quick that was. I was rushing, but the results still came out pretty nice. Well, the glue bed results. We have yet to see how the discs turn out, but there you go. So that's three different ways that you can try out to get cells. Good luck, everybody. Alright everybody, results time. So I just wanted to go over, I know you guys have seen pictures of them already, but I just wanted to go over the discs that we dyed um, and the different results that we came out with. So to start out with, these were the flip cups that we did. So this was the first dye bed that I did that unfortunately I did not capture the video of me flipping the cup or mixing the dyes and measuring everything out and this is what we came out with although it has some cool features in it it's kind of a mess and obviously we got two air bubbles here and a little one there I will be touching those up later but it just came out muddy I, I mean it still looks kind of cool I like the cell detail that we got but you can also see these little spots in here I'm pretty sure that is because I did not mix the dye well enough when I was stirring it and mixing up the different colors I just didn't mix them long enough to get all of those little powdered pigments dissolved into the medium that's why I put the alcohol in to try and help dissolve it I'm assuming it probably would have been even more speckly if I hadn't used the alcohol but this is one of the reasons I am not a huge fan of using glue beds is because it's kind of hard to control how the colors come out I mean you can layer them in the cup in a certain way you can be you can do an open cold pour and just pour it on top so that you can see it a little bit better but when you're doing a flip cup it's kind of a hope and a prayer which is fun that's cool but it is also nerve-wracking especially if you're doing something for commissions so the second one actually came out really trippy. I was surprised at the way this came out. Um, it's still a little dark in this area, but you can still see some details. This yellow is just an acid trip. I, I don't know how these colors came out this way. Obviously the glue basically muted everything a little bit, but um, I think it actually came out really cool. You can see how light this turquoise is in here you can barely even notice it it almost looks white but it is actually turquoise this is more white in this area this is pro chem bright red i consider it magenta i have i use eye dye red if i want actual red this is more of a magenta color which i think is better for blending and mixing colors anyway than just straight red red can be overpowering so those are the two flip cups now in comparison this was the first dutch pour that i did and I mean, the colors, the different in colors is kind of obvious. I, I hope it's obvious. It's so much more vibrant and saturated when you use the lotion mix and not the glue. Um, Floetrol will work as well, but these are the exact same colors that I used. This is just mixed with lotion, my lotion mix that I mentioned before, and these were the ones mixed with glue that you saw me mix up the one cup on. But you can see the difference. You still get cells. Obviously the cells look different when you blow them out. They're a little smaller and they're a little more lacy and webby, which I kind of think is cool. I think it looks more nebulous, whereas this looks more like 
biology cells. This is more like galaxy looking. I don't know. That's that's what I think. But I mean, I just love the color saturation. Also, these are both on MVP Neutron Plastics. MVP Neutron Plastic, love it. Soaks up dye beautifully, beautifully. But these are both on the same type of plastic and you can see the color difference with the exact same pigments that we use, just different dye mediums. So keep that in mind if you're gonna try these out. But yeah, here's the first Dutch pour. And I really like the colors that we got in there. Here is the second one that we did. The second one that we did. I think we blew it out this way so it, it's upside down from the way I blew it, but we got some nice pretty cells in there. And then this one, I actually did, I'm gonna set it on top really quick, but this one was Champion, and I wanted you to see the difference between doing these kinds of dyes on Champion plastic versus a Star-like plastic. So these are essentially the exact same colors, exact same dyes, exact same pour technique. They're both Dutch pours. Well, my version of a Dutch pour, but anyway. Um, but you can see, obviously, this is a little bit lighter, but you still see all of the detail, and this sat for three days, I believe, a little over three days. This sat for a little over a day. This sat for three days, and it's still got definition in it. You can see a lot of little detail in there and all the little cell bubbles that have come up. You know, just for comparison's sake, so you know what you're getting into. Obviously, Champion Classic, you need to let sit longer. And then finally, the two swipes that we did. So this one, if you remember, was just me turning the bed while I had the popsicle stick. Super, super easy, and you see all of the different colors that we got in here. A really cool, simple way to do a swipe. The second disc that I did, I did not actually show me creating this bed, but I did show a picture of the bed. This was also a swipe, and it looks kind of like the Dutch pour, but what I did was I used my palette knife, I laid the colors out the way I wanted to, and I just swiped the colors along in a sweeping motion very gently and you can see the cells popping up as you move the palette knife around. You can use a popsicle stick or a piece of paper or whatever you want. Um, just a very gentle pressure and swipe it around. This one came out really cool. If you notice on the bed, there's a lot more yellows and oranges going on and blacks. This is actually on an orange disc. And the colors actually came out really nice. I knew the yellow wasn't really gonna take, it was gonna act more as a blocker for the other colors. But it came out really nice, so nice in fact, that I went and threw two more orange discs and similar beds, and we will see how those turn out. By the time this video comes out, you will probably see those on my Facebook and Instagram. But that is actually it. So those were the swipe, the Dutch pours, and the flip cups. I said before my favorite is actually the Dutch pour, but I think after playing around with these swipes, this might be my new favorite method. I really like the way these this turned out and the couple of other beds that I did with it. They came out really nice. So hopefully this all helped you guys out, helped answer some questions for you. Thank you so much for the support. TDD Army, you guys are awesome. The disc dying community is awesome. You guys have been so great and so encouraging with everything like I just keep wanting to do more there's so many crazy talented artists out there they just keep pushing me to try more stuff and and do more and just have fun doing it and thank you again guys and I really appreciate it again I'm rambling now so I am gonna sign off remember to like and subscribe check my stuff out on Facebook and on Instagram and happy dying everybody good luck and I'm gonna really quickly touch these up with some alcohol markers on another video. So if you guys want a bonus track, stay tuned.
Oh. Heartbreaker! Oh, no. <laughs>